this video how just 30 grams per day of this nutrient could mean the difference between kidney failure and kidney healing. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today I'm revealing the one nutrient that separates kidney patients who improve from those who sadly don't. I've seen it again and again with my patients and subscribers here. Every single kidney patient who experiences real recovery eats a ton of this nutrient. We're talking at least 30 grams per day. Want proof? Straight from the comment section, here is what happens when you add 30 grams of it daily to your diet. My GFR went from 20 to 40, eating okra, bitter gourd, celery, garlic, fresh lemon, and oatmeal. Can you guess the nutrient yet? Need another hint? Here is another jaw-dropping comment from one of my patients. My kidneys completely bounce back stage 3 to stage 1 and my EGFR is 107 now. I started adding okra and bitter guard for better blood sugar control. Yes, this nutrient also dramatically improves blood sugar levels. One final hint in case you're still guessing. My EGFR improved to 60 from the low of 47 using 3 teaspoons of acacia fiber. Yes, guys, the incredible game-changing nutrient that transforms kidney health is fiber. Fiber from foods, fiber from supplements, it doesn't matter. More fiber equals better kidney function. And this is backed by solid science. And let me tell you this, I have never ever seen a kidney patient improve significantly without dramatically increasing their daily fiber intake. It's simply that powerful, all right? And if you think you're already eating plenty of fiber, well, think again. Research shows most CKD patients aren't even close. You need 20 to 38 grams of fiber per day, but most people are only getting less than 12 grams per day. So that explains my title, right? Everyone should be adding 30 extra grams of fiber to their diet every day. I mean, if they want to improve their kidney function. And before we see exactly how to do that, don't forget to like and subscribe and to share this video with a friend. Because, I mean, friends don't let friends go fiber less, right? Anyway, now the question is, how do you get those 30 extra grams of fiber a day? Well, by adding foods and supplement with proven health benefits. Because here's the thing, when you add something to your diet, you should always aim at getting two birds with one stone. Let me explain. Our first commenter today said they were adding okra, bitter guard, and oatmeal. And you see guys, each one of these foods boasts unique health benefits that could make a big difference for the right patient. Because what I want to share with you today are the best types of fiber according to your stage of CKD and according to your personal need. So if you take a look at my table on screen right now, these are some of the foods I regularly recommend to my patients. Each one of these foods comes with a very special type of fiber. Yeah. Not all fiber is created equal, and knowing which one is right for you can make a difference. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have diabetes. Some of the best foods for you would include okra. Also known as ladyfingers, this veggie can really help diabetes thanks to a special type of fiber called mucilage. This fiber decreases sugar absorption in the digestive tract even more effectively than regular fiber, leading to a more stable blood sugar response. It's an incredibly powerful effect, as these review studies tell us. So, add okra to your diet if you have diabetes. Now, a portion of okra contains 2 grams of fiber, which may not seem a lot, but will get us closer to the goal of 30 grams. 
Something else that helped this person control her diabetes and literally double her kidney function is oatmeal. Oats, in fact, are a source of beta glucan, which is strongly linked to many metabolic benefits, including reduced cholesterol, reduced inflammation, and better glycemic control. Not to mention that a medium sized oatmeal packs 4 grams of fiber, an amazing way of kickstarting the day. I mean, this is basically what will happen if your doctor could prescribe breakfast, take two scoops of oats, and call me when your blood sugar stabilizes. And if you are worried about glucose spikes, make overnight steel cut oats, alright? I love overnight steel cut oats, nothing says thrill seeker like soaking breakfast 12 hours in advance anyway let's also add a source of fat to that breakfast and there is nothing better than flaxseed here yes this is another fiber powerhouse if you're one of my patients you already know that flaxseed is one of the two seeds in the green section of the diet i personally designed for patients with diabetes it's one of the only two seeds patients with diabetes are supposed to eat every day why? Because flaxseed isn't just healthy, it contains one of the best types of fiber you can find, mucilage. Same you get from okra, but flaxseed is also rich in lignans, a type of polyphenol with incredible anti-inflammatory properties. Studies even show that it can improve GFR in some cases. Not many foods can make that claim, which is why I recommend flaxseed. Not to mention the huge amount of fiber these seeds pack. And now you might ask, is getting this fiber and renal diet right really that important? Well, it might be even more important than you might realize. You see, in my experience, the difference between following the right renal diet and just guessing can literally mean the difference between restoring kidney function or watching your kidneys slowly fail. Every single success story I've shown on my channel proves it. Your diet isn't just important, it's life-changing. But here's the thing, finding the perfect diet on your own can be confusing and overwhelming, and generic advice won't cut it because every kidney patient's needs are different. That's where I come in. I offer personalized one-on-one -on -one consultations to create a targeted science-based kidney recovery plan specifically for for you. The goal is providing you with a simple solution, a plan that will give you tangible results at your next lab reports. Email me right now at katherine at newhopeforkinnypatients.com or click the link in the description. Now guys, speaking of personalized diet advice, let's say that a patient is worried about symptoms of advanced CKD. What foods would help with that? Well, something you should absolutely consider here is chicory root. This is a food that can directly improve your gut ability to get rid of toxins, phosphorus and urea in particular. How? Thanks to the huge amount of fiber this root contains, 4.5 grams per half cup, including a special type of fiber called inulin. This is a powerful prebiotic, a type of fiber that nourishes the healthy bacteria in your gut. According to studies, the effect of this fiber is so powerful against uremic toxins, it may even slow down CKD progression. Incredible! And how does it do that? Well, it's because inulin doesn't actually act like a traditional phosphate binder. You know, your calcium carbonate or your cevalamir. Instead of just binding to toxins, it improves the gut microbiota and environment. So there are less toxins to begin with. Yeah, inulin is the Marie Kondo of your gut. It throws out the junk, it makes everything shine, and now your intestines are finally sparking joy. Mm -hmm. Now, something else that would make a big difference when it comes to reducing uremic toxins, aka all the scores and chemicals that are damaging your kidneys, is konjac root. Because as you can see from my table on screen, it contains a special type of fiber called glucomannan, alright? And it has so many benefits for people with advanced CKD. This fiber in particular was studied as a way to decrease the accumulation of P, cresol, sulfides and indole as we can read. And fun fact, those are an ancient Roman senators, they're just the jerks trashing your kidneys. 
Yeah, those are the toxins produced from the metabolism of protein. They are literally eating your kidneys from the inside. Glucomannan can help, and that's not all. This fiber has been proven extremely useful in slowing down diabetic kidney disease by improving cholesterol, glucose, and uric acid levels. And now you may think, great, time to hunt down another exotic root that sounds like a Pokemon and probably also tastes like a Pokemon. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. You see, this root has another health benefit that makes it the best friend of people on a diet. This root can be used to make zero calorie flour. Yeah, zero calorie! So, as you can imagine, despite sounding like a Pokemon, several brands are marketing foods made from konjac root flour. You just need to look for shirataki noodles. If you have never tried them, shirataki noodles can be used instead of regular pasta because there is zero calories and literally no protein. I mean, eating them burns more energy than a CrossFit instructor explaining burpees. <laughs> So yeah, we are talking a kidney saving food that's also the best friend of people who want to lose weight. And the best part, if you prepare shirataki noodles the right way, they are going to be extremely tasty. You shall be seeing my recipe on screen right now. Try it if you have diabetes, if you want to lose weight or even just if you want to add a ton of fiber and probiotics to your diet. This only comes with one warning. This recipe is so good, it may cause sudden urges to to lecture strangers about gut microbiota at parties. <laughs> yeah, that happened to me more often than I want to admit. Anyway, there are more foods worth mentioning in my table here. While I won't talk about everything in this table, something else I want to recommend to people in the advanced stages of CKD is eating more apples. Ah uh, yeah, the humble apple. They say it keeps the doctor away, which may or may not be true. But what science says about the apple is that it keeps the uremic toxins away. Some of them, at least. In fact, apple peel contains a special type of fiber called pectin, which is known to reduce protein fermentation in the gut, potentially reducing the amount of toxins released during protein metabolism, which is like saying pectin is the duct tape that keeps the toxins in your intestines from throwing a party, and in turn may slow down kidney disease and reduce the number of doctor's appointments you need. So maybe the old saying is true? Who knows? But anyway, apples are great for kidney health. And yeah, you are getting a whooping 4 grams of fiber per single medium-sized apple if you also eat the pill. Now guys, you may have noticed that we are counting grams here. So 4 grams here, 2 grams there. Well, it sounds like adding 30 grams of fiber per day involves eating more veggies than what they feed the herbivores at the zoo. And while it's a proven fact that the more the fiber the better, some people may reach a point where even the giraffes are looking at your plate and saying, bit excessive, don't you think? So maybe it's time to ask, shouldn't we just take a fiber supplement and call it a day? Well guys, while no capsule beats the thrill of flossing your colon with actual plants, there are supplements that can help adding those fatidic 30 grams of fiber a day. Because remember that most CKD patients are about 30 grams away from their desired fiber intake, which can in turn make a huge difference in stopping the progression of CKD. So after adding all those healthy foods, it's time to also find the perfect way to supplement your new diet with something that's just as healthy. And if you take a look at my table on screen right now, you can see that we have two options here. Psyllium has and acacia fiber. So which one is better, you ask? Well, it depends. In fact, if you know me, you probably can already imagine that I'm going to recommend a personalized approach. Here how it works. If you can, take psyllium husk. Psyllium husk comes with benefits list longer than a Tolkien novel, covering cholesterol, diabetes, weight loss, gut health, and a bunch more plot twists you didn't see coming. Heck, psyllium husk is so good that it's probably working at achieving world peace right here as we speak. And yeah, I usually recommend psyllium husk to people that need to lose weight or that have cholesterol issues. So what's the need for acacia fiber then? Well, here's the thing. 
In patients with CKD, acacia fiber is way more studied than psyllium husk. Why, you ask? Because if you have CKD in the advanced stages, acacia fiber is going to be a lot safer for you. First of all, because you need to take psyllium husk with a ton of water or it may cause a blockage in your intestine. Not nice. And acacia fiber doesn't come with this risk. And also because you can take just about 10 to 15 grams per day of psyllium max, even if you can drink all the water you want. Which is not always the case, but acacia fiber is different. You can take it with literally a tablespoon of water per tablespoon of acacia fiber. And this is amazing for patients with a water intake restriction. And you can also take it safely in a much higher dose than psyllium husk. And here is the thing, at high doses, acacia fiber binds to uremic toxins like a magnet in a junkyard. It's almost unfair how good it is. I mean, there are case reports of end-stage CKD patients that have been able to go for years without dialysis just by taking enough acacia fiber and you're not gonna do that with psyllium husk. So in short, you can use a supplement to increase your fiber intake. While psyllium husk is great, I do not recommend it to patients in the advanced stages of CKD though. Acacia fiber is much safer and it has huge kidney protecting benefits at the point that it was used to get patients to avoid dialysis. Now, the question I always get about acacia fiber is, how do I take it and in what dose? Now, this you see on screen is my protocol for taking Rena Fiber, my very own acacia fiber supplement. And don't worry, it's going to be super easy. Just remember that when it comes to fiber supplements, you generally want to start small and ramp up the dose gradually. Acacia fiber is very mild, but it's always better to be cautious. So follow my recommendations on screen right now. Something else to remember about how to take acacia fiber is that if it's giving you problems with mixing it with water, try doing it the other way around. Instead of mixing acacia fiber with water, mix water with acacia fiber. So add in an empty glass the fiber you need and then slowly pour water while stirring with a teaspoon. Much easier this way. It's also important to keep in mind that acacia fiber should be taken at least one hour apart from oral drugs like for example metformin, levothyroxine and blood pressure medications. This is just a precaution because again, this supplement is very safe, especially if you follow the doses I recommend. But again, better safe than sorry. And guys, if you want to know more about the renal diet, my video appears for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye.